So even though I talk about books a lot on this channel, I realized I don't have a really straightforward video of just asexual book wrecks. And I think part of that is because I just haven't read a lot of ace books. Um, but in recent years, there have been a lot that have come out. And so I really want to touch on them today and give you a nice little list of uh, different types of ace books that you can read to learn more, maybe uh, see yourself represented, or just kind of read about ace people. So I kind of separated this into a couple of different areas. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about nonfiction. There's fiction. There's some books that I have read, some that I haven't, um, some that I own, some that I don't, a little bit of everything. So hopefully you can find what you're looking for here. Um, if not, head down to the comments. I'm sure a lot of people will have a lot of recommendations for you. So let's get started. So first, let's talk about nonfiction. Now, I'm sure there are a lot of different asexual nonfiction books out there. Um, but personally, I only know of two that I really want to recommend. Uh, one of them just came out. The other one has been out for a couple of years now. Um, the first one I want to talk about is The Invisible Orientation, which is basically the introduction to asexuality. Uh, this is written by Julia Sandra Decker. It came out, I think, four or five years ago, maybe. I still haven't read it. I started reading it a little bit a couple weeks ago. Uh, and from what I've read, <laughs> it's really, really great. It's a wonderful resource if you are looking for more of a nonfiction side uh, to kind of figure out what is asexuality, what does that look like. The second option is Ace by Angela Chen. Uh, this one just came out very recently. I actually don't know a lot about it, so I apologize. <laughs> um, but I know a lot of people have hauled it recently and it's become super, super popular. Uh, if you're looking again for more nonfiction recs, those are the two that I recommend the most. Uh, if you have any ideas for more nonfiction recs though, please recommend them down below because I'm always looking for more ace books to read. Let's move on to fiction, which is my favorite genre. Uh, is it a genre? I don't Who's to say? Um, but I kind of, like I said, I separated this into different categories just because there's a lot of fiction books out there. Um, there's not as many ace fiction books out there, but there are some. And so I really want to be clear with the different headlines that I have. So this first section of books that I want to touch on is like explicit asexual representation. And so this means somewhere in the book, there is a serious discussion or else um, the explicit use of the word to kind of let you know that this is a book about an asexual person. For most of these, it is the central point of the book. Uh, they are very oriented on ace storytelling, um, an ace main character or whatever, but not all of them are like that. So the first one I want to recommend is Every Heart a Doorway by Shauna McGuire. This is one of the staples in ace literature, mainly because the main character, Nancy, really identifies as ace and she talks about it a couple times. It's also interesting because this is more of a fan fantasy novella than a contemporary one. And I think anytime there's an ace story that is told through fantasy, uh, it's just wonderful. It doesn't happen very often. So anytime it does, I feel like it's super important to talk about. Um, but like I said, this one does say the word asexual in it. And I felt that I really related to Nancy on a lot of levels. So if you're looking to get into ace fantasy, this is a great place to start. Um, Nancy does crop up a little bit later in this series because it is a series. Um, but for the most part, she's one of the main people in this story that is asexual. But the whole series is really, really great. And I would definitely recommend you check it out if you're on the spectrum. The second book I want to talk about is called Let's Talk About Love by Claire Kahn. This one uh, came out a couple of years ago and it is brilliant. This is a contemporary novel and it is new adult so it takes place in college which is great. It's about our main character Alice who uh, kind of works at a library and she ends up realizing that she might have feelings for this guy but she's on the A spectrum so how does that even work? Um, and this for me I know a lot of people don't necessarily love this book who are ace but for me personally, I felt that I related a lot to the main character of Alice. And I think it's really important to read because it is one of the few ace contemporary uh, kind of coming of age stories that we have. So even if it's not perfect, I know it's not perfect. <laughs> um, I think it's really a great read if you're trying to figure out your sexuality, especially if you think you're on the ace spectrum, but you might be biromantic. This is a really awesome option for you. The next book is probably the first ace book that I ever read. It's pretty old now. It's uh, came out like four or five years ago. Um, it's called We Awaken by Callista Lynn. Uh, I honestly can't tell you what it's about, but this is a little bit more I think it's fabulism, fabulism, whatever, uh, kind of magical realism, but obviously it's not magical realism. Uh, it's a little bit fantastical, kind of contemporary, a little bit in between. But this one is really, really powerful because it talks about a girl figuring out that she's asexual and she ends up having feelings for this other girl. 
and it's beautiful. But one of the most important parts of this book, I think, is it shows that you can have a relationship, like a romantic relationship with somebody else without necessarily having sex with them. And I think that is so powerful because so few stories tell that today. So if you're looking for that kind of story, I would highly recommend this. Um, it's just beautiful, wonderful, incredible. The next book is one of my all-time favorites. It changed my life. It is Tosh Hart's Tolstoy by Katherine Ormsby. Um, this one came out in, I believe, 2017, and it's contemporary, it's young adult, so it's a little bit on the immature side. If you're not into that, maybe don't pick this up. But I personally really, really resonated with this one because the main character is an ace YouTuber. It's me. <laughs> um, I absolutely love this book because it does not shy away from asexuality at all. It's one of the most, like, uh, it's such a good coming out ish story for an ace person um, because she's really really learning a lot about herself and it's very explicit it talks a lot about what it's like to be asexual so if you have no idea what it feels like or you want to know more about what it feels like I would definitely recommend picking this book up um, like all of these books some of it is not great there are some problems with it but for me personally, I just really needed to see myself represented in media, and this was the book that did it for me. This next book also changed my life. It just came out this past summer, uh, summer 2020, and it made me cry because it was so beautifully done and relatable on all levels. Um, it's called Loveless by Alice Oseman. Uh, if you haven't picked up Alice Oseman, she is an ace writer, so if you're interested, she has so many great books. Not all of them are ace related, this one is. Uh, but this one is kind of a life changing type of book because it is one of the first like coming out stories, figuring out you're asexual. And it also touches a lot on the aromantic spectrum. Uh, so if you're not sure if you're aromantic or you wanna see that representation, this is a really great option. Um, one critique that I will point out that some people have pointed out to me is that uh, the main character, Georgia, is a little bit, um, judgmental of her very sex positive roommate uh, and I could I have a review of this and I honestly could talk about it a lot uh, about why that's the case <laughs> um, but I do want you to be aware of that I don't think it necessarily for me it didn't detract much from the story because I could separate myself from the book and recognize that like it's really not bad to be a sex positive person um, but I know people have critiqued that and there are a number of other critiques with this story to keep in mind uh, but for me personally I really was moved by this book um, it talks a lot about friendship and the power of platonic relationships over romantic relationships um, like I said it's about coming of age it's figuring out your asexual and aromantic while in college. Um, it is really, really life-changing. If you're on the A spectrum, I would highly recommend you pick this up. And if you don't think you're on the A spectrum, you should still pick it up because it's a wonderful book. The last book I wanna talk about that is explicitly ace, I don't actually own. It's called Beyond the Black Door uh, by A.M. Strickland. And I read it a couple of years ago. It is a great book. Uh, I do have my critiques about it. That's why I don't necessarily own it. It's a fantasy novel, but it does a really incredible job talking about asexuality without actually using the phrase asexual. Um, there is this really incredible scene kind of towards the middle of the book where the character kind of realizes like, oh, actually, I don't want to have sex with other people like I am asexual. And she doesn't say the word asexual. I think it's really powerful to have fantasy books that are ace, like I said before. Um, and this one does a really great job with the ace rep. My issues with the book are otherwise. They don't have to do with the ace rep. I think for the ace rep itself, it's a really incredible story. Most of my critiques come from like the actual writing or the plot or the story itself. Um, so if you're looking for a fantasy book that has an ace main character, I would highly recommend Beyond the Black Door. Um, it, it did change my life, even though I had my critiques about it. So I would highly recommend that as well. So this next section um, kind of plays off of the first section a little bit. It has canonically ace characters in it. However, uh, the like the actual phrasing of being ace, being demisexual, being whatever, isn't stated. And so a lot of these, the case is the author coming in after the fact and being like, oh, by the way, like this character is actually ace. So it's technically canon. And there are a couple passages where you can figure out that it's actually canon, um, but it isn't talked about as explicitly as those other books that I had. First on our list, um, this one is a staple for demisexual rep. It's The Foxhole Court by Nora Sakovic. Now, the All for the Game series 
has a lot of problems. I will recognize it's not a perfect series. There are trigger warnings for it. It's really intense. It's definitely not for younger readers. Um, and the demisexual rep is is not that obvious and it's not that like consistent throughout the whole series. Especially if you read through this and the last book, The King's Men, there are a lot of really great passages that talk about our main character, Neil Jostin, who is demisexual. Um, but it also talks about him like realizing he's comfortable enough to have a relationship with another person. And so this is about fake sports. If you haven't read it, it's one of my favorite series of all time. It's wonderful, but again, a lot of trigger warnings. Do your research before you pick it up um, and be very cautious with it. <laughs> the next book is part of a series, and I, I do believe as the series goes on, we will get more explicit ace rep from it. Um, so it's not quite as vague as some of these other ones, uh, but it is The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. Now, Samantha Shannon, I believe, is on the ace spectrum. Um, she Most of her books have demisexual rep in them and ace rep. Um, thinking of Prior to the Orange Tree, there's also some vague references in there. Um, but The Bone Season is the most like canonically explicit without being explicit. Um, so this is kind of a dystopian series. It's a little bit fantasy, a little bit contemporary, like it's supernatural, um, but it's set in the future and it's very difficult to explain. Uh, but the main character of Paige is definitely on the demi spectrum. And so there are a lot of passages where she'll make comments that you will definitely be able to see that she's demi. So I would highly recommend this series. It's one of my favorite of all time. Samantha Shannon is a goddess. She's wonderful. One of the best writers of our time. Um, but because the series is ongoing, we're only about halfway through. I have a feeling, especially in the next book, but maybe in future books after that, we will probably get some more explicit demisexual rep, which I'm very excited about. So um, the next book uh, I don't actually have a copy of with me right now, um, but it's kind of a series uh, and it's The Dark Artifices by Cassandra Clare. Uh, and so that's Lady Midnight, Lord of Shadows, Queen of Air and Darkness. Um, there is a character in that series who is demisexual. I have had a conversation with Cassandra Clare about this and she did say that he's demi. And there are a number of passages that really point to this. So even though it's not like super explicit, I do think it's canon. Um, and that is Julian Blackthorne, love of my life, wonderful human being. Um, he is on the Demi spectrum. So if you're interested in that, I would highly recommend that series. I do have my issues with Cassandra Clare and that series as well, um, but she does technically have Ace Rep. And the other thing that she also wrote is the Mortal Instruments. There is an Ace character in the Mortal Instruments, specifically in the Shadowhunters TV show. I think they touch on it a little bit more. Um, so it's not super obvious. It's very side character. It's not the best, um, but Raphael, is technically ace so if you're interested in that I do like the Mortal Instruments series. It is a good time. It's kind of trashy, but we like it, you know? <laughs> so the next one is technically a part of a series. I've only read the first book and it's not super explicit in that first book, um, but the author has come out and said that this character is ace. And also I would assume there's a little bit more talk about it in the second book that I haven't read. Um, and that is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. <sighs> I love Vicious. It's one of my favorite books of all time. If you haven't picked up V.E. Schwab, she's wonderful. She's also on the A spectrum, so that's really, really incredible. Um, but our main character, Victor Vale, he is technically ace. So if you're looking for an ace, like supernatural kind of book, I love this book because the writing is exquisite. Uh, it plays around with timelines and chronological order and stuff like that. Um, it's all about these two guys who are roommates in college who have a near death experience and figure out that they have superpowers. I promise it's cooler than it sounds. <laughs> So if you're interested, you can check that out. Um, Victor is ace, which is great. But it is important to point out with that series, um, I don't think Victor is necessarily a villain in my eyes, but there is a kind of a harsh stereotype that some people have that ace people are villains. Um, and so often they get casted as villains in books. Um, and that whole series is about villains. So just like be cautious. She does it in good taste, but that is something to be aware of. So this one is also a part of a series. Again, it's a side character that I think is on the ace spectrum, um, but I recognized it most in this last book in the series. Not a lot of people have read this book. Not a lot of people have read this series, but it is very underrated and it's one of my favorites of all time and that is Daughter of Smoke and Bone, specifically Dreams of Gods and Monsters. So um, the character I'm talking about is Liraz. I can't remember exactly if she's Ace or Demi or Arrow or all of the above, um, but there is a lot of passages in this third book that I remember reading being like, oh my god, maybe she's Ace, you know? Um, and then the author has sent, I think the author has come out and said that she's on the Ace spectrum. I can't 100% guarantee that and now I'm questioning everything, um, but the internet makes Lyra as ace. So if you're interested, I, ca I cannot explain this series to you because it is fantasy and it is very complex. Um, 
so I'm not even going to try, but I would highly recommend it. And I do have book talks up for, I think, oh, I did have book talks up for these. I can't remember if I do anymore. Oh, 2014 booktube was the time. Um, this next book is one of my favorites. It's called Dress Codes for Small Towns by Courtney Stevens. Uh, the main character, I believe, is on the demi spectrum and if not, they're kind of gray A's. It's very, very well done. Um, this is such a beautiful contemporary book. It's very much a YA coming of age type of story, but it deals a lot with faith and religion. So if you are one of those people who is questioning your religion or you just want to read more about different types of faith or whatever, this is a great intersection between queerness and the church. Um, if you're not interested in those things, I would still recommend you read it because I think it has wonderful rep and I think the story is really relatable whether or not you grew up in church or not. Personally for me, I really resonated with it because I did grow up in church and it's just so well done. Courtney Stevens is an incredible author, period. Um, but this is my favorite book of hers because it's just so well done and there's dummy rep in it. <laughs> oh, and I didn't tell you, it's basically kind of like a Footloose retelling. So if you like Footloose, you just pick it up. And then the last book I wanna talk about in this section is Afterworlds by Scott Westerfeld. Um, I read this a couple years ago and it's not necessarily one of my favorite books of all time, um, but there technically is some demi rep in there if you're looking for it. Um, I think the author has talked about it before, so it is more explicit than some other books, but it's also not really talked about as much as in the explicit section, you know? Um, so I would recommend it. It's about this girl who's publishing a novel, I believe. And so it deals a lot with story within stories. So if you're looking for a really fun writing type of book all about stories, I would definitely recommend Afterworlds for sure. So this section is kind of for headcanon ace rep. Um, I feel like the previous section we just did is canon because the author has talked about it. Um, even if it's not necessarily written in the story, whereas this is really not obvious. The, care, the author hasn't really talked about it. The internet has talked about it. I have thought about it and I deem it ace rep, even though it isn't necessarily ace rep. Um, and it's very short. I know there's more out there. I don't really want to talk about any more than these two. The first one I want to talk about is The Raven Cycle by Maggie Seafodder, um, specifically The Raven King and maybe Blue Lily Lily, Lily Blue. Um, there's really no proof of this in the book, so don't read it thinking you're gonna find a lot of great ace rep. But I know the internet <laughs> thinks this and I also think it. Um, one of the side characters, Henry Chang, who I think he appears in Blue Lily, Lily Blue. He might be in Dream Thieves, I'm not sure. But specifically in this one, um, a lot of people had canon Henry Chang as ace. I think there can be an argument made for it and I would stand by it. Um, I don't think I could necessarily prove it 100%, um, but a lot of people will head Canon Henry as ace. So if you're interested, there are a couple lines that I read that I'm like, I think he's one of us, you know? So if you're interested, I would recommend this series, period, because it's just really great. Um, but Henry Chang, we had canon him as ace. He's one of ours. The other book I want to talk about, I have actually made a review uh, for this book, so you can go ahead and watch that if you want to know more. It's kind of problematic, and I don't necessarily think it's a great way to talk about ace rep, um, because there's some harmful stereotypes that come with it. Personally, I think On Chesil Beach is relatable to an ace person. The problem with it, and the reason why I don't like necessarily calling it straight up ace rep is because um, it's set in the 60s and so it's at a time where um, women don't necessarily talk about sex a lot. Um, and the main character is terrified of sex and doesn't necessarily want to consummate her marriage on the wedding night. And so that's kind of the whole premise of the book. And it's relatable because she doesn't want to have sex. She's very uncomfortable. Um, there's a lot of passages that I related to because it felt like an ace thought. However, um, it is insinuated, spoiler alert, I guess, it's insinuated that part of the reason she's so uncomfortable with sex is because she was sexually abused in some way or another. And a lot of people will harmfully stereotype ace people as people who have been sexually abused or assaulted who are so uncomfortable that they don't want sex anymore. Now it is, you're valid if you feel that way and that has happened to you and that I know there are ace people like that out there, but I think it's a harmful stereotype. And so it's difficult to recommend that book as strictly ace rep when that happens, because it can be a little bit, a little bit off putting once you get to the end of the book, if you're an ace person. But like I said, I'm recommending it to you because if you're looking for uh, ways to figure out if you're on the ace spectrum, I think it's a really great read because reading through some of those thoughts do feel kind of ace oriented. Um, so proceed with caution, be very careful when you're reading through it, read it critically, read a lot of reviews about it. Um, but if you're lost, 
it has helped me, so I would recommend it. So this next section um, is all about ace books that I'm 99% sure are ace. I just personally haven't read them, so I'm recommending them with a grain of salt. Like, I think they're ace. I'm pretty sure they're ace, but I haven't read them, so I can't be 100%, and I don't want you to think that I'm recommending them without knowing all the repercussions with them. And I also don't own most of them. So number one, the first book I want to talk about is Summerbird Blue by Akemi Dawn Bowman. And a lot of people recommend this book. I know I need to read it. It's on my TBR. I'll get to it one day. Um, I honestly don't even know all of what it's about, but I do know that it's ace, and a lot of people recommend it. So check it out. <laughs> the second book is How to Be a Normal Person by TJ Klune also on my list to read. I know TJ Klune has been getting a lot of hype recently because he wrote The House of on the Cerulean Sea. In the Cerulean Sea? Words are hard. You know, you know who I'm talking about. Um, I think he also wrote Wolf Song um, and a number of other really queer books. So if you're looking for more, I'm pretty sure that book has ace rep. I still have to read it, but I've heard. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and then the other book I want to talk about is City of Strife by Claudie Arsaniol. I'll put it on the screen because I don't know how to say that. Um, I believe this one is fantasy and it has an ace character, but I'm not 100% sure and I don't know what it's about. <laughs> I can't give you a lot of information about these books because I honestly haven't read, I don't read summaries when I go into books most of the time. I just have heard that they're ace. Um, and also this isn't a complete list. There are a lot of books that I know are ace that I haven't read yet. And so if you're really lost, I would recommend going on Goodreads, Googling it. There's just like so many books out there. A lot of indie books too that are ace that are not big. Um, the next book I want to talk to you about though is called Tarnished Art of the Stars by Rosie Thor. I still haven't read this book. I've been meaning to read it. Um, but this one is sci-fi. So if you're interested in more of a sci-fi A story, this is out there. Um, let me see if I can tell you what it's about from the back of the book. I think it has to do with a cyborg question mark. It's a game of cat and mouse. Uh, there's spies and assassins. Um, these two people become allies. Sounds like enemies to friends type of situation. Not really sure, um, but I have heard good things about this book. And then finally we have Belle Revolt. I don't think that's how you say it because it's French, but um, this one is by Lindsay Miller. Um, I have been recommended this one a lot as well. And I think this one is about sisters. One of them would rather hold scalpels than embroidery needles. Um, and I think these sisters or people swap lives, question mark. It looks really interesting and I've heard good things and I am 90% sure that there's ace rep in it. So definitely check that one out. And again, like I said, that whole section could be way longer. There's a lot of different books out there. I know Quicksilver is one that people recommend. Um, has Autumn Leaves, question mark? Might be one, I don't know. There's literally just like a lot more out there than I talk about that I have read, um, which is really great because I feel like uh, in past years there haven't been as many ace books. So if you have recommendations of any of those types of books that you think I should read, please recommend them down below. I would love to read more ace books all the time. Um, and since we're talking about book recommendations, I'm going to give one last one that's kind of like a little promo deal thing. So if you're not into capitalism, leave. But I do want to push my own book. It's hot. The more time passes since I wrote it and published it, the less I want to talk about it because I'm not as proud of it as I once was. I know it has issues. It's not a perfect book. No book is perfect. Um, but I am an ace writer and I did write and publish this book and it is available on Amazon and Book Depository. And I have actually heard things from people that says it really helped them. So I'm not trying to be like, my book is so good, you should buy it. But um, I am an ace person and this is a poetry collection that is written by an ace person and it has a lot of books about being asexual. So if you're interested in supporting an ace writer, um, here is your chance. It's all about uh, failed friendships and witches and magic and also the patriarchy and it's a lot like Amanda Lovelace. If you like Amanda Lovelace, you'll probably like my book. The cool thing about my book is it also has pictures. So if you're interested, um, you can check that out. Um, and it is ace, so we got that going for us. And for those who are asking, one day I will be able to recommend you my actual fictional novel that is ace. Uh, we'll get there eventually. I don't know when, but it'll happen. I'm writing an ace book. It's cool. 
So um, that is a very long list and I'm actually really excited that it was so long because I was scared that I wouldn't have that many to recommend you. Um, but those are all the ace books that I have read that have really touched me, that have changed my life and helped me to understand myself better. Like I said, you can put down some more recs in the comments. If you have any issues with some of the books that I've recommended, I would also like for you to critique me, let me know the problems. I know there are problems with a lot of these. Um, no book is perfect but it's important to talk about the critiques because otherwise, um, what's the point, you know? Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.